All right, everybody, so you haven't seen me on camera for a little while now. That is because I have welcomed my second child, Liam, into the world. And that's also why I look like I was just in a fight. No sleep. But look, I want to get into the office quickly to talk about this thing. So this is the Silverstone Ice Mist. And look, judging from the box, you would never believe that this sort of simple cooler could become this monstrosity. Now I wanted to talk about this, how this becomes this, and whether or not this whole fan contraption on here actually works. So what's going on here? And why in the heck did Silverstone do this? Well, as CPU power needs rise, more pressure is put on motherboard VRMs. The performance of higher end DDR5 modules has started to become tied to SPD hub temperatures. And some PCIe Gen 5 SSDs tend to need a lot more cooling than previous generations, sometimes a whole lot more. These components are all right in the firing line of downdraft style GPU coolers or models with those flow through heatsink designs. With an air cooler, there's active airflow around that area, but not with an AIO, even with relatively good case airflow. So Silverstone, they figured that if people need more airflow, that's exactly what they're going to get. And in order to achieve that, they're launching the AIO with these things. These are small add-on fans that you could add multiples of to the pump head in order to get basically more cooling. And the system that allows this is absolutely brilliant. You just pop off the top, a tab system guides the pogo pins into place and a pair of snap rivets secure everything. Subsequent fans slot onto the top the same way and it's all capped off once again by the pump head cover. They also allow for 320 degrees of rotation to get coverage over whatever area you want. Controlling them though, that's another matter. Silverstone recommends that you plug them into the CPU optional header so they run in sync with the main AIO fans, but personally, I appreciate individual control over all of my fans, so I'd recommend plugging them into a standard motherboard fan header and controlling them manually. Even though these 70 millimeter IMF 20 fans run at 2800 RPM, they actually aren't that bad provided you're not running them at Full tilt. They're actually a lot quieter than the main fans on the AIO. So let's have a quick listen. So actually, you probably can't even hear four of these things running at 50% right now, even though that this shotgun mic is super sensitive. So to me, that is a brilliant concept. There's only one little caveat to this whole thing is that Silverstone only sells these separately at $15 a pop. So you don't actually get any with the ice mist. Now that's a positive and a negative. On one hand, you can only buy them if you need them. On the other hand, one of the coolest things about this cooler you have to buy separately. It's like DLC. If you want the best features of a game, you probably need to pay extra than just the base game. But do they actually work? Well, I popped a single one onto the pump head, directed it over the crucial T700 Gen 5 SSD, and let it run at a constant 50%, so 1,400 RPM, and hit it with a 20-minute crystal disk mark load. And the results were pretty eye-opening. That single fan makes a world of difference in temperatures, but it only had a very minor impact on overall performance. But look, Crystal Disk Mark is very much a synthetic benchmark. You're not really going to have one of those situations in your everyday gaming life. So what I wanted to do is put these fans to the test in a couple of more real world scenarios that you're probably going to experience on a day to day basis. So let's start with a full CPU load and add the baseline stock results after 15 minutes for the T700, the memory modules and the motherboards VRM area. And to be honest, even with a 3900K running Full out, none of these get anywhere near worrying temperatures. Adding just one fan over the VRMs ended up lowering temperatures everywhere, with the VRMs and SSD seeing the biggest drops. Adding a second, this time over the memory, ended up getting minimal benefits, with only the DDR5 itself measuring a meaningful temperature drop. Finally, that third fan ended up being largely pointless, since the whole area around the CPU socket area was already getting more than enough airflow. Now gaming, that gives you a fundamentally different scenario because instead of the AIO taking most of the heat away from the CPU in a CPU centric test, in gaming you have the massive GPU just 
pumping hot air directly into the area around the CPU socket. So in this case, those fans could make a massive difference. So here, because of the components being stressed, the SSD and VRMs run much cooler while the DDR5 runs almost nine degrees hotter in stock configuration. And regardless of how many fans we added, the temperatures on those components dropped by at most five degrees. And let's be honest, that won't have any impact whatsoever on performance. So yes, the fans do work when it comes to lowering temperatures, though they do have a negligible to no impact on performance in this situation. But this situation is something we have to discuss because it is a larger case with tons of space and pretty adequate airflow to begin with. Where additional fans can come in clutch so important is in space constrained scenarios. So like the ITX market. But in those situations, you also have to watch out for the overall height of anything that's cooling off your CPU. And even without those fans installed, this is one of the higher pump heads around. And as you stack the fans, this thing can get high and that can cause all sorts of issues with tighter spaces. So please, take these numbers into account. Other than the fans, the Ice Mist is a very, very straightforward 240 millimeter AIO with a couple of little twists. Three phase, six pole pump motor that's actually made by Apple Tech. There's also RGB fans and a subtle lighting effect on the pump, though the overall lighting isn't anything spectacular. For a 240 millimeter RGB equipped AIO, it's also pretty affordable, which is good if you're planning on grabbing one of those add-on fans. There's also 280 millimeter, 360 and 420 millimeter versions if you want a bit more cooling power. The installation here is pretty straightforward. The only thing I'm not crazy about is how they're handling AMD. They're using the stock AMD mount with only two screw down points rather than replacing it with something more secure. This also happens to have one of, if not the quietest pump that I have ever heard. Let's take a quick listen. So you have a quiet pump, you've got the add-on fans, you've got a relatively affordable all-in-one liquid cooler, but all of that means absolutely nothing if this thing cools like a flaming piece of junk. So we're gonna head into AMD and Intel testing, but I also need to mention that none of these add-on fans were added to the cooler in any of these results, so please take that into account. Let's start with gaming and get ready for a shock because the Ice Mist is one of the best AIOs we've ever tested, matching the EK Nucleus at lower decibels while fading just a bit at higher levels. But even then, it still stays ahead of more expensive RGB equipped coolers like the Galahad and Kraken while matching the ultra expensive Ryujin 3 at 41 decibels and beyond. Switching things up to a lower wattage all core workload and we're still seeing a top five finish for the Ice Mist. But take into account all the coolers here are clustered much, much closer together. That's likely because a 180 watt thermal load really doesn't put much stress on 240 millimeter AIOs. But as we move to 253 watts, there's a bit of a trend developing since once again, Silverstone ends up being a solid upper mid tier cooler rather than ringing in a top three finish like it did in gaming. So it looks like the Ice Mist is specifically engineered to handle higher ambient temperatures associated with high GPU load. Without any limits whatsoever, like most but not all other coolers, the Ice Mist fails to get under Intel's T-junction until a bit later in its decibel range. After that, it ends up trading blows with the Kraken 240 while beating alternatives from Deepcool, Corsair, and Be Quiet. And while it might not look that great from a temperature standpoint, the Ice Mist still ends up in the top five coolers when we look at raw clock speeds. And when you consider its price of about a hundred bucks, that's not bad at all. Moving on to AMD and gaming on a 7700X shows the Ice Ice Mist being almost identically positioned as it was on Intel. It's one of the better 240 millimeter AIOs we've tested at lower decibel levels, but on this platform, it's also one of the best if you don't care about how loud your system gets. And all of this despite using AMD's stock mounting system that I hate so much. And here's something that might actually shock some people. Even though AM5 CPUs are so hard to keep cool, Silverstone actually found a way to ace this test. On a 7600X at least, the only 
only thing we've tested that consistently beats it is the Ryujin 3. Meanwhile, on a hotter running 7700X, the Ice Mist is still so impressive, especially at lower RPM, where it manages to beat the T30 at some points, but it does get beaten by the Freezer 2 and ROG AIO. And as we move on to the 7950X, it's pretty evident that as CPU heat rises, Silverstone's positioning starts to slide just a bit. It's still very competitive with some of the best AIOs on the market today though, being just 2 degrees behind the T30 while essentially matching the Freezer 2 and EK Nucleus. And that's pretty much reflected in the 7950X's frequencies. It doesn't get the absolute best speeds and far from the worst, but when you have less than 75 megahertz separating the 5 best AIOs we've tested, well performance ends up being pretty much identical regardless of which one you pick. And believe it or not, one of the most impressive things about the Ice Mist is the fact that it gets the performance it does while using RGB fans. Because if you've seen any of our content, you'll know that in 90% of the cases out there, RGB and performance are two mutually exclusive terms when it comes to fans. But what I actually wanted to do here is sort of like normalize things out. Are these fans as good as they seem to be? So we're gonna slap a pair of P12 Maxes on this thing to see if we can improve performance any way at all. A few things should jump out at you right away. First of all, an improvement of 2.6 degrees might sound like a lot, but it's actually one of the smallest here. That points towards Silverstone's fans being some of the better RGB equipped models around for cooling off a radiator. The other thing this does is move the ice mist pretty high into our ranking here almost tying the mighty T30 and seriously outclassing some premium alternatives like the Kraken, H100i, and D30. So let's cut straight to the point here. Even when we don't take these cool little add-on fans into account, the Silverstone Ice Mist is actually one of the best 240mm AIOs that we've tested so far, especially when you take into account its very aggressive price point. The real star of this show though is of course, well, <laughs> those add-on fans but their real value depends on how many there are. Install one and depending on how much air flows around your CPU socket area, you could see a big drop in component temperatures, but add more than one and well, there's a lot of diminishing returns here. As a matter of fact, because of these add-on fans, the Silverstone Ice Mist actually wins our damn innovative award. Look, it's not going to top every single performance chart out there, but Silverstone was simply thinking outside of the box with these things, and I absolutely love this. In a market that is full of cookie cutter designs, yes, some get a little bit more performance than the Ice Mist, though this is like such a competitive product, it's the fact that they are actually thinking about what is happening in today's cases, especially in smaller cases, where most of that GPU heat is just going to be riding around in that CPU socket area and messing up all the temperatures for the components around. Now, in my opinion, this makes it something special. Sure, I wish Silverstone would have just added one of these to the Ice Mist package since the biggest selling point of this cooler ends up being, well, an add-on component. But at least it doesn't increase the cooler's price. If you want one, just grab one. If not, at least you get one of the best price to performance AIOs out there right now and you can add extra fans later on. So I guess that's it with this video and I'll be very honest with everybody here, I absolutely love it when companies think differently in this market. If you guys think of anything else that we should cover that not necessarily in the cooling space, but anything for that matter, please put it in the comments below. This is the kind of stuff that gets me excited and I hope it gets you guys excited too. So until the next one, I'm Mike with Haru Canucks and I'll see you later guys.